a few years. I know there are some moments in time that you know kind of stay frozen in your memory. At least it, it, it does for us. Uh, and I would assume that one of those moments was you know when you finally you and Abhay had a conversation and you guys said, "Let's just do something." So can you just describe that conversation? Yeah, it was uh, it, it was 2007, uh, and we were I was staying at my sister's place in Gurgaon, and uh, Abhay had come over, and we'd met a couple of times prior to that. And that at one in the night we go outside, uh, you know, on the roads in Gurgaon. Or wahan pe wo anda burji milta na? See, so everybody's nodding. Everybody's been there. So there was an anda burji stall. We stood there and we said, "Yar, tum anda burji banana banate raho puri raat, whole night." And we ate, must have eaten like four or five plates of anda burji. And we were making the strategy. <laughs> Um, at the end of all of this, we got super excited. Maybe it was the high on under or something. But we got super excited and we said, look, I think we're going to do this. And it was one of those, you know, the moments in life, by the way, you know, is never these, these, and there have been few such moments, but such moments in life have always been, uh, you know, it's very hard to predict them. It, they don't, you don't know why they appear, why they happen. And you make that decision in an innocuous moment to say, yes, we will do it. But you don't really know what you're going to do. You just have some sense of it, and you kind of go forward, and you start collecting people. You start getting, you know, start putting a pen on the paper and say, look, okay, maybe this is what we want to do, or a code, right? So I think that was the beginning of a lot of those things that uh, that transpired after that. And to uh, say you're going to do it is far more important than what you're going to do. That's. That's really interesting, and then Sajo is nodding over there because, uh, and some of some of the folks here know the story, but um, uh, we have a very eerie parallel uh, to that story. So I was uh, in New York uh, on a on a client project, uh, completely frustrated with work, uh, and I flew back, and you know, U.S. flights land at, at midnight. Um, we were flatmates, uh, Sajo and I, and Deepak joined in uh, a couple of months later. Um, and we flew in, and I, I, I reached home, and I said, I'm hungry. Uh, this is Cyber City. I don't know which Anda uh, Murji stalls you went Some to. Those, yeah. But uh, there were the uh, Paratha stalls uh, in, <laughs> in, in, in Cyber City. And, and then we said, let's go eat. Uh, and I told Sajo, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, here is an idea. I'm starting it. This is what I'm going to do. And then Sajo said, OK, let's do it. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> He was equally frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for you to come back. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much. And then, and, and you know, and uh, Deepak also uh, sort of moved in flatmates. And then um, yeah, we just uh, figured life out after that. So interesting parallel to yeah. your story as well. Yeah, that's called like scientific approach to building a business. <laughs> <laughs> Things, right? So you've spoken a lot about culture. Uh, and I want to bring that up because um, at least when the, the three of us wanted to build this company, uh, we knew that the problem that we're going to solve, the industry that we're in, a lot of these things can change. Uh, but the people who join us along the way uh, will always be the most important part of this journey. Yeah. Uh, and we will always be incredibly indebted to them for choosing to join us and for choosing to you know, uh, share our goal and then take it to another level. Um, you've spoken a lot about culture, and you know, I just want your thoughts on how you've been able to maintain that for over ten years, keep the low attrition, you know, build this brand uh, on the back of the quality of people that you have. Look, I think I, I don't think I understood the value of uh, the of culture uh, till about uh, uh, five uh, five years ago. I've always been very indebted to other people that have joined us, and so I was I'm very glad that you actually think of it that way, because I think uh, the world's gone into a stage where, uh, you know, just the fact that, you know, you're giving employment, you start to make it sound much larger than what it is. Um, it's actually the other way. Uh, you have to be very indebted to the people who come and join you. And you know, at tough times and in early days when you're nothing. And it's it's always been at the back of our mind. So the core of all of this has always been that level of indebtedness that we feed, we've always felt towards people. And then there are these business school books that just screw you up. Right? And then they tell you to do something very different about how to deal and treat people and 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 talk about employment and, and you know a bunch of stuff. So and as we grew uh, in the very early days, things were fine because you know, you know, the team size would be this much. I would know everybody. 
Uh, you would uh, you would connect with everyone and do the right things and say the right things and you know talk about you know what mattered to people. And then you grow, and then you have people who will come in and tell you what systems to set up, what processes to set up, and say, okay, yeah, that's also good. You know, we should grow, and you know, I should be a proper CEO, so I should get these systems and things which you know everybody thinks about. So we got all of the systems in place, and those systems, uh, obviously, the systems performed, the system performed, but the output of those systems were not necessarily what you really wanted. So, you know, 2012. You know, we, uh, we, we were growing massively, uh, phenomenally, uh, and uh, we had raised a lot of capital. Uh, and, and to me, the, the growth then felt as if, look, we are going to go from, we were about 200 people then. We said, look, we're going to go from 200 people to <coughs> whatever, 800 people, and you know, there was a plan built uh, and all of those things. I said, great, 4x growth, done. Go hire and leash people. But what was happening at the at the core of it, right? So you could see the structure becoming larger. But what was happening inside the structure? Here's what was happening inside the structure. You suddenly had added about 600 more people, okay? But the 200 which were sitting like this before this suddenly felt alienated because I put a structure on top of them. I told some of them who had given their life and sweat to me to say, mm -hmm. oh, so I'll give this job to somebody else. Somebody who's very, very trained in, in a lot of these, uh, you know, accomplished, a, a lot more accomplished than you are, he's getting the job, tum nicheo. So those 200 shrunk to 100, okay? The 100 left. Now, so I had actually added 700 people, by the way, mathematically, right? Because I was 800 people, right? So I added 700 more people. Now, but those 700 people had no clue why they had joined us because we, we, are, we were a successful startup. They didn't join us for the mission. They didn't join us for the purpose. They didn't join us on to achieve something. We were paying a lot. Everybody was joining us. And then, you know, my VP engineering would come back and say, we need to pay more. Chalo, lilo. It's bahut paise. So, <laughs> what was happening? The core kernel of the company didn't understand what we were going to do. And therefore, instead of 4x growth, we grew 6%. Okay, 6%, 10% maybe, I don't know. Everything came to a stalling halt. Our attrition was 30%, which meant in three years, company would be new. Three years time, we would have a new set of people. So what was my first reaction? You know, tighten up the process, give more things, and all that. nothing changed. And I was watching this literally out there, convincing myself on one hand to say, I think, I am not the right CEO. I think I should give up. I can't fix that. I can't, I can't get, I can attract people, but I can't retain them. I am not able to get uh, people to understand why they should be there. And I have all the right intentions. Like, I actually like people. Like, I think of them nicely, but they still don't stay with me. What is wrong with them? <clears throat> and so then I realized that, look, the company has grown. The way to connect earlier and the new way to connect has to be done in a very different way. And I went back to our roots of what we were. I'm sorry it's going to be a long answer to this whole thing because it's a very, very passionate topic for me. Um, and I think everybody should have their own ways of, of doing it. <coughs> but I somewhere <coughs> went back to the roots of you know, what made us successful in the first few years. And if you look at that, you realize that you know, some of the things that we did was a lot around trust, that we trusted our people a lot. We gave them freedom to do things. Um, we were as non-hierarchical as possible. Right? There is obviously need for hierarchy because it gives you some uh, order. But we, by the way, at that time, between me and the guy below, whatever, last guy, nine layers. We created nine layers. A, B, I was L. As I asked my agent, I said, what level am I? L. L? <laughs> what happened to A to L? There are different people there. You, I said, how many people are at L? You are alone. I said, what am I doing at L? Take me down. Anyway, so I had to reduce layers, right? But how do you do these things, right? So in order for trust, we, we used to say we trust people. We really didn't trust people. We said we cared for people. We really didn't care for anybody. 
Right? Because there was a process written out, out there. So I would say we trust you, but we didn't. Why? Because we trust you, but no, no, one second. Fill out this form before you do anything. Fill out this form for uh, going on vacation. Fill out this form for reimbursement. Fill out this form for travel. Fill out this form to tell me what you'll do because I will not trust you unless you write it down for the next three months what you're going to do. So we did all sorts of crap uh, to try and basically put a system around something that does not require as much of a system uh, because it was basically built for a system where you didn't trust people. So the first thing we did was to throw out a lot of that. We said, yeah, we don't want all of this crap. Uh, we had a bonus system, by the way, a very advanced bonus system where you won't even know how your bonus was calculated, let alone anybody else, because it would have these five, six parameters, um, had weightages to it, had scores to it, had a weighted average score to it, then it would compute something, it would put it into some curve and then comes out a number. <laughs> and people would look at this and say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but no one was clear on why we were doing this, right? So what is the purpose of, what, what's the purpose of bonus, right? I questioned that also. I said the purpose of bonus is to essentially indicate that if you worked harder or better, I'll pay you more. What does that mean? I don't trust you. I don't trust you that if I gave you all the money in the world that was needed, you will do the job that's required. That's the concern. So we got rid of bonus. We said everybody in the company, except for sales, shall be, shall be getting flat fees. That's right. Uh, <coughs> flat uh, payout of 100% bonus. Now, the people who are, again, the point there was not to say that, look, I, because I cannot compute bonus, it was more to say, look, there is a deep enough trust that is needed in the company to say that if you are doing innovation, you should be willing to fail, and I should be okay in you failing. Because what was happening when you ask somebody to write an OKR, they were basically writing something that would be 25% of what they can actually achieve for people who had stopped aiming big. Yeah. The reason why we got to where we were was because people were aiming big. And suddenly we put in this process which was designed to essentially make sure that you make your money, but aim low. And that's not what you want as a company over a long period of time. So we got rid of bonuses, we got rid of performance management system because I thought that was the worst thing that, the, that has happened to humanity to late, is to create a performance management system. And it's worse for even leaders and managers to essentially go through that crap every quarter for like 15 days and have this innocuous conversation with people to tell them that you're not that good because you got 4.74 out of 5, which I don't know how it got computed. So we basically got rid of all of that and we said, look, we're going to really, really trust you. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to essentially not have any bonus systems there. If you're innovating something, just tell me that you're innovating. We'll know if you're good or bad. You don't, I don't need a system to tell me that you're good or bad. The, the problem with the performance management system was we never cared for people's growth. And when you go and ask anyone here and elsewhere, people want to grow in life. All right? And we said, look, let's, let's grow people. Right? Let's care about their growth, truly speaking. And we wanted people to be ambitious. And so we allowed for a lot of failures to happen. With failures, only success will come. And if we believe in that, then we should let, let our people go through that. We then realized that people were leaving us because they had, uh, they had better, uh, they had different job opportunities somewhere else, right? Because they wanted to do something else. But we had this stringent rule of saying, Achha, tumne ye kiya, ye karoge aage, puri zindagi. Who does that? Yeah. Today's world, people shift in 12 to 18 and say, I want to do this, I want to do this now. So we opened up something which is called the bridge program internally. And the objective of that bridge program was to say, if you worked in a role for, uh, if you worked in a role for uh, 12 months, without asking your manager, you can change your job within the company. We then realized that good people, by the way, have a lot of capacity, a lot of capacity, right? You can never say, if you go and your engineering planning, he'll always put six hours. But the reality is the amount of time good people have is very high. Yeah. And so people wanted to try out new things. So we created a program to say, okay, here is your full-time job, but here are part-time job opportunities that you can actually go and participate in. I think at the last count, 25 or 30 percent of the people in the company actually have tried a different program uh, in addition to their job. And so they do these, th these works and so they don't have to, so sales guys are doing data sciences, uh, engineering is doing marketing, uh, finance is doing data sciences, so all sorts of things because it's people's interest. You can't control it. 
but let's give people an avenue to essentially go ahead and do these kind of things so that they can gain from it. So we opened that up. Uh, we got rid of all policies. We have no reimbursement policy. We have no travel policy. We have no vacation. Like, it's an auto approval on vacation, by the way. If you want to go on, like, please go. Just don't have to approve. No approval is needed. Uh, if you want to travel, please travel. There is no hotel policy. There is no flight policy. Nothing. None of that. Nature. People said here, you know, your cost, your, your finance bill will go. Sorry, your travel bill will overshoot. We had reduced by 15%. Because people are genuinely trustworthy. They're genuinely good. But you have to fundamentally believe in that and not be scared of that. So uh, anyway, I have hundreds of stories of that nature. But I have felt that when you start doing these things, people respond significantly strongly. I, I think I would, I, I would have taken four to five steps. People took 100 steps. And that's the power of trust, care uh, that you have to genuinely show. And I think that's what our culture is all about.